Welcome to the second episode of Back With The Squad. I'm your host, Lila Bromberg, and today I'm joined by 16 members of a 2017 Maryland men's lacrosse team. First up, we've got 2017 Tuaraton winner Matt Rambo, who was a first-team All-American and led the team in points and assists. What's up, guys? Matt Rambo here. Thanks for having me on. Just drinking some bourbon with my turf glass, baby. That's what we do. Next up, we've got Connor Kelly, who led the team with 46 goals and was a first-team All-American. What's up, guys? I'm not wearing my white tee, but shout out, Terps, baby. Let's go. I don't get it. <laughs> Everybody's rocking a white tee in this thing. There's like four people with dogs. Four. <laughs> wearing a gray hoodie, yeah, Connor. Hey, that is, There's like, one guy wearing a white tee. Uh, Connor, go again. We <laughs> <laughs> that one. That's weird. Oh, he's nervous now. Look at him. All right. <laughs> Don't get red. Yeah, we've got it. Isaiah Davis Allen, who is a first team All American and team captain. Hey, what's up, guys? And we've got Colin Heacock, who is a second team All American and a team captain. Greetings. We've got Tim Muller, who is voted the most outstanding player of a 2017 Big Ten NCAA tournament and was a first team All American. How's it going, everybody? We've got Tim Rotans, who was a third-team All-American, second-team All-Big Ten, and had 11 goals for the Terps in their championship run. What's up, everyone? We've got starting goalkeeper Dan Morris, who was an honorable mention All-American and on the NCAA All-Tournament team. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. <laughs> and we've got Bryce Young, who was an honorable mention All-American and had 38 goals and 13 caused turnovers on the season. 38 goals. <laughs> oh, no. Hell yeah. Diaper. We've got Dylan Maltz, who was on the NCAA all-tournament team and had two goals and assists in the national championship. What's up, guys? Bull Moose Dan. <laughs> oh, oh, no. We've got Jaron Bernhardt, who was an honorable mention All-American and voted the Maryland Athletics Freshman of the Year. Wow. What's going on, guys? We've got John Greeno Jr., who led the team in face-off percentage and had the second most ground balls on the team. Yo, what's up, guys? Yeah, Johnny. Great there. We, had, we have Ben Chisholm, who was a senior midfielder and had a career-high 12 points on seven goals and five assists in the season. Happy you saying go to Mayo, guys. Yeah. We've got Nick Manis, who was a 2017 team captain and appeared in all 19 games. That's me. We've got senior defender Mac Pons, who uh, missed the first nine games of the season but was a big contributor once he came back. What's going on, guys? Oh, Bryson's bouncing. <laughs> internet's about to go out. We've got James Bull, who started his career at UMBC and transferred his sophomore season and appeared in three games. What's going on? Hey, that was it. That's our first team All American, but it's all good. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got Josh Greenson, who was a senior midfielder who appeared in six games. How's it going? First team all scout. Let's get it. Yeah, so like are you guys back all together now for the first time? Like how long has it been since you've all seen each other face to face like this? Or I guess on Zoom now. Um most of us zoomed last week outside Hi, of Connor. Connor. Bryce Connor, Connor, and Jared. It's your old roommate, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> I zoom with Jared twice a week. I don't know what you're talking about. Man. Whoa. I guess I missed those invites. That's well, it's current team only, Chiz. There's You're always, like, groups of people that Zoom, like, once a week. But sometimes Connor Kelly never wants to join. I don't know why. What's <laughs> the problem with us, Connor? No, Connor Kelly. Bryce was very excited to have Connor on this. I'm excited. It's not I'm excitement. I'm thrilled. <laughs> thrilled? I was thrilled when I heard he was joining. Yeah, I wasn't. I appreciate I'm that. excited. Thanks, I joined all, right, all the time. Are you enemies with these guys now? You're on a different team now. Is there going to be some rivalry? Ever, if you guys just saw that. No, no, all love. Nothing but love. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> lie. Don't act all nice. No. There's not going to be love. Nothing but love, love, you know? There's not going to be love when I get back on defense and square you up, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> You're moving to midfield, right? That's right. Is Corley still going to fall for the, the same old <laughs> trick every single play? <laughs> 
<laughs> so how are you guys staying busy with everything going on especially those of you guys who are playing professionally like how are you guys staying in shape and stuff Matt um, retired for me, life for me um, I live with a couple dudes that also play in the league so we've been keeping busy by just working out with the trainer in my hometown and just throwing the ball around and running around in the city I'm trying to learn how to uh, do long distance more so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not a great long distance runner, but I am the fastest here in a you know twenty to forty yard sprint. So I still have the record there in Maryland. What? Smoke your dumb ass, dude. What? What? Isaiah, you ran a five point one forty. Can't even break for you yet. You're eating that ice cream, looking all thick over there. You got some in your mustache too. No, don't say you're the fastest forty. They know you're going to say this. So. Oh, that's true. We forgot. Ryan's in at a four four. Fresh. No, I thought it was four three. Four three. Four three flat. So before we get into discussing your guys' historic season, I have to know, like, what nicknames everyone here went by and kind of some of the stories behind them. Like, who had the best nickname of everyone that's on here right now? Squish yeah. pineapple head. <laughs> <laughs> Eight ball ass. <laughs> Nikki Dice. Uh, Chisholm's nickname was Squish Pineapple Head, his <laughs> year, which was sick. Yeah. Connor Kelly's nickname was also Beans, his senior or junior year. It didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> what about the team dinner you only requested beans I don't even like beans it was the rock the rock is a good one Ryan's in Ryan's in just goes by their last names are Jared Saracen from Friday Night Lights true yeah that's a good one what's Bull's nickname he got marbles, huh? Bull. <laughs> um, no. uh, what yeah. was that? Marbles. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, what was your nickname? Marbles. I, I, everyone called me Bull. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think so. <laughs> it was Bullion Ball. Bullion Dozer. Some people called <laughs> Isaiah <laughs> Buddy Healed. You know who Buddy Healed is. Buddy Stoffers, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> there he is. Look at him. There's Buddy Healed. <laughs> Plays basketball and lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> so. Going into the season, uh, you guys, especially like for the seniors, you guys had made three consecutive Final Fours and lost in the national championship game in each of the prior two years. So what was the team mindset heading into the 2017 season? Don't lose again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? Like, it was that simple. Just don't lose again. It happened three times in a row. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think there's much else to yeah. it. I think we all knew how, how hard it was to get there and then – you know, we all tasted that feeling being so close, losing in a in overtime. So I think it was pretty clear on what we had to do, and I don't think there was anything else. Uh, you know, we had in mind going forward. I think once the season started, we all blocked out everything else and just kind of went all for it. Yeah, I would say we were pretty, we were pretty damn motivated. Um, I think everyone on this this call was pretty serious about getting back there and winning, and I think we had a different mindset in the playoffs compared to the, the past couple of years. And it was kind of just like not talk about like the tattoos we were going to get when we win the championship and not do any of that stuff. And when we were going to get there, we are going to fucking dominate. It was more like what did we do for the last couple of years that we got there and whatever we did to get there in the past, we have to do so much more to win it now. So I think we just worked even harder than the years past. So I think our mindset was just like work harder than everyone else too. Was that something that you guys talked about, like, throughout the season, you know, your goal of winning a national championship, or was it something that you kind of just tried to do one game at a time? Always a goal. It's just never – you never speak about it. It's, it's in everyone's mind. It's just a matter of, like, just doing it. We all kind of just put our heads together and said, we're going in for it. It's not like everyone was talking about, oh, yeah, we want to win a national championship. Everyone wants to win a national championship. It's just a matter of actually getting there and doing it. And for us, especially the seniors, it was everything led up to this point. Like for us seniors, four years, we made it to the final four. We did all these different things and it ended in the way it should have ended for us, in my opinion. What do you think the biggest I just knew that after a while. And I think the kind of the mindset was we just had a strong senior class and it was like, all right, the light at the end of the tunnel is showing up quicker. We don't have another year. We don't have two years left. Like, this is our last go-around. Everything was more 
business trip whenever we went away or during playoffs, playoffs it was, you know, more let's take this business approach and it was not really uh, – as much joking around, but we did have a great joke in culture. But when we were in the locker room and on the field, it was just straight business. Yeah. I was, I was going to say something pretty similar. Like I think uh, we did a pretty good job team wise and coaching wise of breaking up the season. Right. Like it was like when early on prep for the big 10, when the big 10 regular season, then when it got into tournament play, you know, big 10 tournament came up, we knew we needed to win that. Then right after that, it went right into May. And, like, you know, every time May comes up, you got to win in May. So, Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would just add on that, that I think that what made this team different is that this team had great balance. I mean, I think just as a senior class and as a junior class, we had a lot of different kinds of personalities that saw the different things from a different angle. And, uh, I mean, I think that our senior and junior class did a great job of just talking to each other and trying to figure out what's best for our team. And, I mean – from previous years, like, I felt like guys were, were just burnt out. And, I mean, I, so I had a conversation with Dylan and Rambo, Colin and Manis and Bryce, to, like, just about what our needs kind of were for the fall and then winter. And our team made some big changes, and I think that that, that paid off. What do you think was, like, the biggest challenge you guys, you know, had to overcome to reach that goal and, you know, who was that championship trophy in Boston? I mean, I would honestly say that there wasn't like a major challenge. I mean, I would say that kind of the biggest thing to overcome was the, the year prior, just trying to get over the, the 2016 loss. Because from our perspective, we should have won that game. I mean, like we were up late and there were some stupid small errors that us, you know, as a team made. So we just wanted to make sure that, you know, just the following year, I mean, we had a great class coming back. Senior scout team, like you know, everyone coming back, the junior class, sophomores, like as well. So, so I mean, I think once we got over that hurdle of losing that game, it was kind of just. I mean, from my point of view, like it was pretty smooth sailing. I'd say there, uh, there wasn't like a challenge, but there was definitely like one point in the season where a flip kind of switched, um, and you know, we lost like we lost our junior year to UNC, and you know. I think it was like right before spring break, we lose to Villanova, who, you know, is a good team, but we definitely should have beaten them, like on paper. And once we lost to them, it was like, you know, the perfect issue that UNC was the next game up. And like we all had bad, a bad taste in our mouth from the year prior. Right after that, you know, we kind of went on a roll um, as a team. And I, I think the class also, I think everybody across the board just knew like, this is where we need to flip the switch. Like this is spring break. Like we got two more months together and we got to win out. Yeah. I mean, that UNC game was coming off. We went three weeks without getting a win. We lost, we went to South Bend and lost to Notre Dame in a five, four game. Then we went to Albany. We were supposed to play, but that game got canceled or got postponed to another date. And then we were home against that, against Nova and we lost again. So we went three weeks without having a win. And I think after that Nova game, it was kind of a gut check for us to kind of uh, reevaluate and get into a mindset of more of a, a game-to-game situation of let's win this game, move on to the next one, win this game, move on to the next one. Um, but outside of that three-week stretch, once we kind of reset and kind of rallied for that UNC game, we kind of uh, – it was kind of smooth sailing up until uh, we had, what, three games in like eight days with Penn State – Albany and uh, Rutgers. Yeah, Rutgers. And then we we had a beat down, just like a brutal schedule there. And then we had to go to Ohio State and play them. We ended up losing overtime. But then, again, that was another reset. And, you know, we, we set back up for Hopkins, which is obviously our biggest rival. And then we didn't lose after that. So it was a good, good run at the end. Yeah, I think we're a really confident team, too. Yeah, I think also, like, the past three years before that, there was not really any sort of, like, in-game experience or, or um, situation that we hadn't been through. So when we're going through that year and we hit adversity, it's like we knew exactly what had to be done to, to bounce back. I just really – the whole experience of going through so much stuff with – such a strong captain base with Isaiah, Heacock, Manis, and Muller. But, you know, they were our captains. But we had so many other great personalities. And our whole senior class and junior class had so much power vocally that uh, we, we just wanted to keep it. Yeah, these guys are captains, but there was so much leadership 
throughout the whole team that it was just different from the years past where captains really only stepped up. But I think from that year it was more of everyone had a say because we had such a strong senior class. Yeah, and I think we're a super close team. I think, uh, like, from the seniors down to the freshmen, I mean, Jared would tell you that the senior class was so super close to some of the freshman class, and I think that really helped us out just being being that close. Yeah, Jared, yeah. what was that like for you as a freshman, you know, coming in to this group that obviously had the goal of a national championship and had all this experience? Like, how did you handle that? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was definitely a lot for me uh, coming from Florida, but I, I watched that game, um, that UNC game, and uh, just kind of with my prior connections, I definitely felt for those guys because I kind of knew – I knew a lot of them um, prior to that, but um, I can't actually thank these guys enough for what they've done um, and how much they've helped, you know, the younger guys. I mean, like D uh, Dylan was saying – we were so tight. Like there was no clicks. Like the seniors hung out with the freshmen. Everyone was always together. Um, and I think that's what, what, what always made us different from other programs. Um, uh, we were just so tight knit and, um, and it, it just brought us together, not off the field, but on the field. And, you know, it showed that year. So I was going to take you guys back a little bit and show you some, uh, of the key sequences from a national championship game to get you guys, guys' thoughts and insight on it. So let me just share the screen. Bryce, you alive? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so the yeah. first part we're going to look at um, was, you know, the game was pretty back and forth to start, and then we're going to pick up where it was tied at 2-2 uh, with the fourth quarter winding down, and Connor Kelly had a goal here to give you guys the first – uh, lead of the game, and then you went on a run to score two more unanswered and, you know, build the lead. Check out this pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it comes. Oh, oh, Good extra step there, Beansy. It should have followed Quint's advice. <laughs> Ball to the lefty. The, left the off hand. Shoot the scout. All right. He's low. All right. Uh, uh, hide a, yeah, hide a low and away. Low and away <laughs> saves the day. Ball to, that was your first uh, hide a low shot of the year, right? I think it was my first lefty shot of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first low lefty shot ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good pick by Adam. Oh, they'll pick him. Give it nice. a that not a test? Man, Adam was playing with a broken finger, too, that game, right? Yeah, yeah he had two goals. Broken hand, yeah, it was like shattered. Adam's also left-handed shot. My, man, my man's Adam hit the big C curl. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Oh, That's a great, great you did it high level. Can you rewind that for a second? Did he even move his stick? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, don't did he move his stick at all? Oh, my God. It's, it's the overhand. The overhand locked him up. I don't know. I don't th even think he moved. Oh, okay, Isaiah. Look at you taking the whole bottle down. You okay over there? <laughs> wow. Didn't even move Dylan, Dylan you, like, you know about those, right? Best feeder in the league, baby. <laughs> Look at that pick. Start off. <laughs> How important was that run for you guys in the game, you know, with it tied at 2-2, especially with them scoring the first goal? It was uh, – I think that momentum really helped us out throughout the game, obviously. But we had so many opportunities on offense, and their goalie just played outstanding. And our defense, I knew personally, and I think everyone can agree, <laughs> that our offense was – you know, going to get our shots. But our defense was so locked down right there that whole game that I knew they weren't going to get over, uh, like, six goals. So I was pretty excited uh, that we just had to hit a couple shots. And, you know, they were falling then. And um, we had so many opportunities, but we just didn't can on it. I think we could have really run up the scoreboard if some of these shots went actually went in. So I don't like know. Like we said before, too, like, 
all season we were we were through went through so much different thing like obstacles and you know even though we went down early like Matt was saying our defense was playing great and we had a couple opportunities on offense but like he said their their goalie was playing outstanding and so we never really panicked or anything like that we just continued to play you know the way we've been playing all season long and eventually the shots started to fall but we didn't really get away from our game plan or anything like that we we trusted each other and like you see you know, Connor Kelly came up big, started getting that momentum going, and with Rotans and Moss with his off hand. What did you have, like two or three with your left hand? So I think it was, uh, you know, we just stayed calm. We just continued to do what we've been doing all season long, and we knew that eventually the shots were going to fall and the defense is going to, you know, keep playing great. Right, and I, I would say, like, it just goes at, like to show that <laughs> older guys, having veterans behind you, uh, no matter what, we trusted everybody uh, that was on the field. And to see juniors and seniors step up like that, uh, each and every game was different. And I think we could rely on a different person each game and have Adam step up, Tim stepping up, Dylan stepping up. It's just like the story of how the Final Four goes. It's like one game is so much different than the other because they have to, uh, they have to look at Matt all the time at X, and then they have to worry about Dylan and Hecox. So they had so many guys – they had to worry about that uh, just our seniors and our veteran play stepped up. So, Yeah, and I think what actually started that run was Adam's goal, like down the alley going underneath righty. And that was huge because we didn't even th- – I think it's Albany, Adam broke his hand. So we didn't even think he was going to play. And he ended up playing the game before against Denver and this game. So, you know, for him to score on our second line with a broken hand was huge because uh, <laughs> people were worried about our first line scoring um, that – they didn't really get – the second line didn't get the respect that I think they deserved. And, and to, for Adam to come down and score really, you know, a little fire under our butts and, and then to score again was even bigger. So I think that really – we carried that momentum throughout the game. So for him to start that off was huge. For him to get a goal like that um, – and I think the, the commentary even says, like, Adam's got, like, two goals on the season or four goals or something, and he scores right on cue. So, uh, you know, he really gave us a, a big jolt that um, I think a lot of people didn't didn't expect. But – he was a very underrated player for us. He did a lot, and, and for him to play with that broken hand was, was huge. And then another sequence I was going to show you guys is kind of towards the end of the game. You know, you guys led from that point on, and then Ohio State managed to make it a two-goal game with a little over two minutes left. Um, so before I kind of start that video, I just wanted to ask you guys, like, what was your mindset once they made it a two-goal game and, you know, time is winding down? Personally, with John Greeno at the X, he, he did a phenomenal job in the playoffs. And, I mean, he was beating the Albany guy who was, what, number one in the country. And then we played Denver Baptiste, who was <clears throat> top guy. It was like we had someone at the faceoff X, which I think is a really important part of the game. And having John there <laughs> was comfortable. And then having the defense like Muller and Bryce and, and all those. I don't think real quick. I don't think people realize, like, we played the top four face-off guys, and John beat all of them. Like, we played Bryant, who had Massa. We played Albany, who had TD, and then we played uh, Baptiste, and then Withers. Like, those, I think Baptiste was one, uh, TD was two, and then Withers, and then Massa. And, like, knowing Garino could beat all those guys was just, like, we weren't even really worried about it. We knew we were going to get the ball, which um, playing those teams isn't, isn't – um, you know, a no one going into the game. Tournament MVP? Is that what that was? John's number one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you look at our defense. goes to follow. Take the face off out of the game. <laughs> the defense, Muller, Bryce, Manis, Isaiah, Dan Morris in the cage, like not many teams are putting up numbers on us. So it, it really, I mean, you, you don't, you're not worried about anybody offensively when you have those guys behind you. Are we going to yeah. just uh, forget about Brozo's behind the back? And the <laughs> <laughs> Is that the game changer? <laughs> I mean, so, so, I mean, we've talked kind of a lot about kind of the guys in, in this room and, and then our juniors too, but I think that our second line was awesome and also, uh, I mean, our scout guys all, all year were awesome as well. I mean, it takes a full team. And I don't think that people realize that just watching the game. Like, you know, all people here are the people scoring or, or, you know, people who are actually out there playing. But in order to be that good at that point, I mean, it takes a whole roster of all 50 guys. So, I mean, guys like on the scout team, you know, especially vets like James Bold and Josh. I mean, like that was worth, you know, a ton just coming down the stretch there. So, And even like for me, like, the craziest shit was Danny Dolan, who was a lefty, 
who would play scout team goalie righty. Like he'd play with his <laughs> off hand and just get absolutely pelted day in and day out. And there was that was nuts to me. But you know, even beyond that was yeah, like like Isaiah said, James and Josh, guys who you know your senior year you're expecting to play, and and they you know swallow their pride, go out there. Um, you know, week in, week out, not seeing the field, but putting everything they have you know, into the game. And I know Josh had, like, shin splints all year. And Bull, I don't think, has any cartilage left in his knees anymore. He's got that ugly-ass mustache. But, you know, he still came out with every day. Yeah. Even with Rex Becks. What are you saying, the Rex Becks? The Rex Becks. Yeah. out. But, yeah, we were up by, like, two. And the time was winding down. And, you know, obviously – like they're saying the the scout guys, you know, they gave us great looks all season long. And like I said before, I think it was like after that Villanova game, that's when they really – I remember that next week of practice, you know, nobody was happy but the scout guys. I think that was the turning point in our season. You know, they came out – I remember, you know, perfectly. Bull and Josh, they were just talking shit to us, trying to get under our skin, literally trying to fight us the entire practice. But yeah. at the time, we were all pissed off. Like, we were getting frustrated and, you yeah. know, turned the ball no, on mistakes. Yeah, but at the and then at the end of the day, it, it helped us a lot and it prepared us for those last few minutes of that that championship game because you know we stayed relaxed, we didn't panic or anything like that, and just by them pushing us all you know all year long, um, you know all we the main goal was just to keep the ball safe and just run and keep our composure. Really, yeah. it's awesome. harder to play our scout team than the uh, than our opposing team. One thousand percent. Yeah. But they weren't good at talking smack at all. <laughs> they tried to. They, yeah. no, they, they came to. They came talking shit, then they left. Yeah, then we had a place. For, for Never those, got under my skin out not there. one time. Don't, Never don't, got don't under do my that. skin. Don't do that, Matt. I'm just what, saying. What, what if we started calling plays and nobody knew the play we were running? Yeah, <laughs> so that's true. They would listen to our plays and then they would start cheating it. But no, you, you couldn't you even remember, remember the plays, plays bro. bro. What is what 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 the man up? Next stick. <laughs> Someone else start this. <laughs> oh, Falcon, Falcon. <laughs> Everybody should be looking around like, all right, who's going to make the first move? Who's gonna I don't know the play. Somebody else start it. <laughs> <I'll just step in>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we can look at that and kind of the end of the game, and then you guys can tell me a bit about the celebration that happened after this. <laughs> How should I know exactly what it is? Cunningham. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the netter? I mean, man. Yeah. Jared, you're so fast. <laughs> Jared, did you get an assist for this? Nice apple. That's an apple. Apple mm. a day. Boom. Mm. Plus one, Isaiah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Damn. I got shit. Try to flex for the cameras. Low to low can never go. I got goosebumps. Dan! Eat it! What's up, man? man? Boom! Boom. The old old five hole camera. (laughs) I think I threw it to Isaiah right after that. That's a plus. Have to find three goals. Dang, or with the high knees. Moment. That's what Demet has tattooed on his back. He's so quick. That's number one right there. Honey G. Tillman, don't trust Randall to run away. Anyone else black out right here? Here's Isaiah, <laughs> like, flipping out on Brozo. Brozo's just... I blacked out the whole game. Get out of here, Brozo. <laughs> Over pad stacks. <laughs> top of his lungs. I don't remember running I don't remember running on the field, but I will say that uh, I lost my helmet and my gloves. I'm kind of salty about it. I kept mine on specifically for that reason. <laughs> I didn't want to lose my helmet. I didn't see my helmet ever again after that day. <laughs> hey, <gold laughs> Your pile. jersey. Yeah. Running away. Or my jersey. U.S. lacrosse, you know, U.S. lacrosse stole my jersey. Look at that. I hate dog piles. I'm running yeah. away. Yeah, I was not good on that thing either. <laughs> yeah, what was that dog pile like? Did anyone get crushed? I was on the bottom, and uh, <laughs> I was having a panic attack. <laughs> I I wanted to get the hell off me because uh, it all looks cool, but it was brutal. I mean, I was, obviously, I was very happy, but I went from being, like, so happy to feeling like I think I might die. So I, I just started freaking out <laughs> saying, get off me. Uh, but, yeah, that's how it feels. <laughs> I didn't well, what was it like for you guys in that moment just to be able to finally celebrate that? I mean, to break Maryland's drought of, you know, 42 years and to just accomplish that goal you guys had set out to do that season. 
I mean, well, I think the best person to kind of speak on that is Nick, just because of <laughs> Nick's family history with Maryland. Uh, thanks, Isaiah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, I think uh, I don't. I can't. There's nothing you can really put into words. I think just uh, just everything that you know, everybody has been through, and I mean, all of us have been following Maryland, Maryland for a while. Um, I've been fortunate to follow him for, for a pretty long time, but, um, but I mean, just all the effort and work you put in and just like all the guys and all the parts that have to be a part of it. I think like, that's just what makes it so special. And that's what like makes that feeling so unique is it's, and like, they've like everybody's talked about the scout team, the coaches, the trainers, like whatever it may be. And, you know, everybody goes through all kinds of stuff in college. So I think like, just I'll never be able to put it into words, but it was definitely the greatest feeling I've ever had. And, uh, I mean, I'm not really sure something's topping that just because of all the things that were, you know, involved in it. Yeah, and I was going to say kind of off with Nick saying, like growing up in Maryland, like you don't realize how many people that like we won, but it was like like high school coaches, high school friends, like family members, like – some people that you like barely even knew like followed you or followed Maryland lacrosse would like come up and congratulate you. And it's like, it's not just our team that felt like we won. It was like the whole state, like anyone who's been a Maryland fan ever, it's like they kind of feel like they got a victory too. And it's like, we were so close two years ago. And it's like finally getting over that edge. It's, it, it's just crazy how many people it touches. It's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. There, I mean, there was alumni in the crowd, like crying. It was, I thought that was pretty special, but just being a part of the group that we were a part of, like, especially the seniors. I mean, I was a transfer and they were all super welcoming. It's really cool to be a part of a team that, you know, loses two straight championships and then goes back for a third year and gets to compete at it again and wins it. And it's, you know, we're, we're going to be a 17 team forever. And I think we had a lot of great mem memories that year, but there was, you know, Nick bringing the speaker, on the bus blasting this song that he picked that at first you're like, what the hell is this Nick? And then you're fucking on the bus, like blasting it after every single win. That was the best. We had a Nick, Nick started I was riding with Garino to, uh, I don't know where we were going. Just we're going to, we're going to the team house from our crib. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We were just riding around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And he, Greeno, Greeno had it on. I was just like, what is this? I was like, Kelly is going to get so hyped. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, we kind of did whatever got Kelly going because, you know, you got you got to make him happy and stuff. Uh, so, we, okay. you're we like, here we go. We're going to bring this <laughs> in. And Kelly's going to get so hype and, like, everybody else was. No. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Manis heard it. Manis, <laughs> Manis played it, like, ten times in a row in the locker room. Forty-five right times at least. <laughs> I've never been more hyped in my life. Though. And, was, and then we played it, you know, whatever, 25 more times. But uh, has right. anyone ever looked at the lyrics of that song? Yes. Uh, yeah. I know. All the Besides when Coach Tim was now. The the it's, it's, it's just – The Rutgers locker room when we played that oh. was rocking. The Big <laughs> Ten championship was pretty sick, too. We like, well, yeah. I thought before the championship, everyone was banging the lockers going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But, YMCA, right? We were playing YMCA. In the no, game. I was talking about money for nothing before the oh, game. Everyone yeah. was going crazy. Oh, after the game, too. I think the plane ride home was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Yeah, uh, Henri. Oh, yeah. DJ life. That we was, had our own music on the life. plane. <laughs> Kelly, did you ever find your pants? I think there pants on there. I think those, those, flight, pants those flight, flight attendants were pretty nice. <laughs> the pants were, were great. <laughs> the, the atmosphere was yeah, awesome. electric. Yeah, I think the – I think the best part about that, like they said, though, all the alumni were in the stands and stuff, and, like, we were celebrating with them after the game. And when we flew back, like, by the time we were back in College Park getting ready to celebrate again, like, it was basically a race. Like, all the alumni were trying, like, who to get that down there the fastest. Like, everybody came back. And I think that was probably one of the most special things, seeing the guys. Like, I remember we were freshmen, you know, like Chanchuk or Earhart or Burnlord from the year before those guys who really, you know, helped us get to that point um, for us to kind of finish the job for them too and for them to be, you know, be able to come down and celebrate with us. You know, I think that was probably one of the coolest things too because it was like all the teams from the years past from 
10 years ago, 20 years ago from last year, everybody was just together and it was just like one big celebration and felt pretty bad the next probably three days went on. Felt pretty bad when we had to get ready for Rambo's tour time. Yeah. And then you know how that went. We had to get ready again. We all celebrated for that. So <laughs> I don't know. The, the Chinese disco. Yeah, it took like five years off our lives, but you no. Know, I don't know. Who, I don't know who it was after the game. Like I remember, we were all cutting nets, cutting the one net, and then uh, like we went after we cut the net, everyone got some net, and then we went to the sideline and saw all the alumni. And then I don't know who it was. Who whose idea was it to cut the other net and give it to alumni? Someone did. Someone started cutting the other net. Oh, no, but everybody had some net. Yeah, to the alumni, which is pretty cool. So I know a bunch of guys have. I know Kyle's got some net. Oh, not to mention Anthony got engaged yeah. that day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a lot of about that. Our trainer too, because yeah. he also came from. He came from Albany, and he he was still pretty new and stuff. But I, how did I even get brought up that if we won the championship, <laughs> he was going to do it? His friend, he told, his, he told us two days before. Yeah, he showed well, us the ring. He said it like in the beginning of the season. We kept saying like, "This is the year we're gonna, you know, we're gonna win it finally." And blah blah. And you know, he was just like, "All right, well, if you do it, like, I'll propose to my girlfriend at the time." We're all like, "All right, yeah." yeah. And then like the season went on, and I don't even know what happened. But like two days before, he's like, "All right, well, you guys gotta do it because I have the ring." <laughs> all right, we kind of like forgot about it, and stuff was going. Everybody's just going crazy, and then next thing you know, he's just on his knee, and everybody just it was just the craziest day of my life. That screenshot video, everyone jumping. Yeah, somebody got engaged. We won a championship. <laughs> and Colin, didn't you and Matt like bet on Tillman that if you guys won a championship, he had to get a tattoo? Coach Tillman got tatted up. Yeah. He's got one? Yeah, yeah. man of his word. Did he get What did it? he get? Like, how did you guys get him to agree to that, and what did he end up getting? He said if we win, he'll do it, be part of something special, <laughs> and it's – uh. You guys got to go and ask him for yourself because I've seen yeah, it. Undisclosed. We promised him. He promised us that he'd get it. So when he sh- he sent us a picture and he promised that we just keep it on the low key. We we got offered big money to leak it, but we never did. We're, we're man of our word. So you yeah, have to go follow up with him on that one. But he yeah, got yeah. a tattoo. Did anyone else get a tattoo or do anything to kind of like commem- commemorate the championship? I got one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know? if you have a tattoo, raise Isaiah, did you hand. get one? No. If you have a tattoo, no. raise your hand. No. This one. You got too many tattoos already. Boom! <laughs> yeah, Rambo, where's yours? Pons has one. I think everybody has one, basically. Did you guys get them together? Mine right there. Uh, uh, me and Garino <laughs> got ours together. Yo, what up, Chiz? Oh yeah. I went with Dolan. Back that boys. Let's see, Mac Pons. Let's see your tattoo. Pons. Yeah, Paul. Wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jared are getting ours together. Yeah. I'm down. Love the enthusiasm. <laughs> are you guys' like, first tattoo for some people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people. What? Atlanta, baby. Yeah. We planned everybody was going to go do it together, but obviously we got sidetracked and we never did that, but. Remember, remember when Connor Celebrate. Kelly went to go get his tattoo? He was like, "We can't post." He started crying. <laughs> Kelly, I've never seen somebody sweat so much, and their eyes were bloodshot, and just from a little tattoo. But he was like, "My mom and dad are gonna disown me." He <laughs> called his mom too. Really? <laughs> we were in Atlanta, and he didn't go home for a, a extra week because of, he was afraid to show his parents. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it was posted on your Instagram, so you believe that. <laughs> oh, we didn't post it because you. No, were- Matt did. Yo, Matt's like, oh, I posted it. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yeah, what was the celebration like? I mean, you guys, most of you guys are twenty-one at a time. It's been a bit now. How was the? What was the celebration? We got. You so- already know where we went right when he landed, yo. We went right to Bentley. <laughs> Come on, yo. Uh, our days. <laughs> Trade for Bentley's. I think it was open tab for all of us all night, and they kept the bar open. I feel like I think everybody went to Bentley. I think even the flight attendants went to Bentley's. With us too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Girls Who came on two. Girls came back to Bentley's. Yeah. One two. I just remember the next day, Muller's house had so many goddamn burgers, and and what else was there? There's like <laughs> oh, oh, rings. Yeah, Natty Light there. So much food. Someone bought like forty pizzas. Hans's yeah. mom. Natty Pond's Light. Mom bought, like, yeah, Pond's mom had left over some tailgates and stuff. 
I don't even remember that, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we literally went to Bentley so we landed, and when we woke up, it was a party for the next five days at my side yard with a bunch of tables playing beer die and beer pong and any <laughs> game you can think of from – grand college party. Yeah. So whatever time, and we did it for like – Four days, went to the tour call <laughs> thing. When we got back, we partied a little bit more. Yeah, we had me, me Maltz, and Bull never lost a Pong match. So. Connor, yeah, remember that walk up? Pong and who's the worst? <laughs> Nelly is um, the worst. No, Dream Team. Dream Team. Yeah, me, Road Chance, and Bull. <laughs> I think, like, <laughs> Josh Ryanson by far is the worst beer pong. <laughs> Ryanson by far is the worst. All that. <laughs> well, if you want to know the worst, is Lucas Granger's the worst pong player. <laughs> on the <street> planet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, nobody cared about anything though. I'll t- and you know what, Connor Kelly, you didn't care about anything that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were. What's up, Bryce? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, Bryce, my. how'd you celebrate? Oh, man. So what was, like, the best – your guys' favorite story or memory from that celebration? Like, what was the best – is there, like, a funny – best funny story or moment from oh, the – video of John. The video of Garino? No. <laughs> uh, the video of Garino? Swirly? I couldn't even pick one. No. From his. Full Full was the man was a pretty good one. Yeah, the tailgate <laughs> with everybody and – the Where's plane, the, uh, right to the plane. The tailgate might have been the best. Yeah, that was all time. Yeah. Who got to hold the trophy on the plane? Like, how do you guys decide that? Or is it? I don't even know that. Uh, no idea. Cunningham. I don't know. I'm That's surprised right. you didn't leave it on the plane. Cunningham. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good plane ride. I know Mattis carried it off. If I'm correct. Did I? No. Yeah. It was <laughs> you or Rambo. I think it was Rambo. Not at all. Yeah. I, I didn't. I, I, didn't didn't speak I didn't have. I think Coach Tillman carried it all. Where I think, I, honestly, I think Tim Honor had it. <laughs> I think you're right. He still has it. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying that thing around though was one of the coolest. I films. think it's on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't remember landing or, like, getting off the bus at VTH. Yo, I I had an interview with NBC News outside of a VTH after that whole thing. Humble brag. Yeah. Humble brag. brag. It's not even humble. (laughs) Dude, I remember LMB tried to get us all to do an interview. I'm like, sure. It was probably the worst interview I've ever done in my life. I probably didn't make any sense. We did walk in the Uh, Your best interview was post uh, the Big Ten. (laughs) <laughs> Talks for like three minutes and you just nothing connected. It was, great. It, was, it was the best. It was the best post game interview I've, I've ever. Oh heard. yeah, I got enough of those Snapchats from you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Every last interviews were always my favorite because Tillman like gives you the information you need, to, you need, and he'll go on for a little bit. And usually, you guys go on for a little bit, so like. A lot of the other sports, other athletes will just give me the shortest answers, but I always like doing interviews for lacrosse because you guys would give us what we needed and give us long interviews. I mean, oh, yeah. Coach Tillman. <laughs> All those American studies majors, they know how to do interviews. Well, Kelly, Kelly's was right on the field after the game, so he was not prepped at all. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> tore blankly into a screen and just. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do a segment that we're calling Recount the Rivalry. Um, and we're going to get your guys' thoughts on some of the teams you guys played that season and your biggest rivals. Of course, John Hopkins is that cra- classic rivalry for Maryland, which we'll get into, but it definitely seems like Ohio State was a giant rival for you guys. You lost the first matchup to them, a close game, and then beat them in the Big Ten Tournament Championship and the National Championship. Just what was that rivalry, rivalry like with them that year? Well, there's a guy on Ohio State that – Try to knock out like one of our red shirt guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the that's kind of the bench. <laughs> that's kind of what started it, and I think after that it was uh, I don't know, like s- some words got said and s- some stuff kind of got screwed up. So it got a lot hotter than what it needed to be. But it, it I mean, it was definitely three serious like games. The heat. Yeah, the yeah Mahler, the Mahler, the play, what to say at the end? Of the yeah, so. yeah, I don't think I said anything. Did you lie, Rambo? You scared to go to church? <laughs> I thought prior to that year, at least, there was a bunch of other teams I thought we had 
a lot more animosity towards than Ohio State. So that's uh, the Ohio State game. I remember Bryce before the game when yeah. we started warming up. <laughs> Bryce, Bryce but, this one's all you. That you. It wasn't like, all Bryce. It wasn't all. It was all in this whole thing. We, it stems. It stems from Bryce. So Bryce, 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 Bryce. they didn't like our warm up. They didn't like how we ran out. What? What did I, I do? Want? I, I think it was just out. everybody, honestly. I think it was just everybody that season. Like we said before, we were on mission, and we didn't like anybody. Yeah, yeah I, I think they're we just – didn't like anybody. Nobody liked us, really. Oh, and my God. I just vividly remember uh, Big Ten semis. We're warming up. No one's in the stands. It's like dead silent, no music playing. Connor <laughs> Kelly is just not warming up. He's standing at the midline, just – Kenneis, Swiss <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Bryce, that was right after Tell Me Goes. No one say anything. Yeah. The pre- <laughs> Kelly runs out and starts yelling. <laughs> we were just in Kenise's head from the jump. <laughs> you had been in Kenise's head since sophomore year. He was my favorite, you know? <laughs> We actually got a Twitter question from Brendan Werkheiser who wanted to know why did it seem like Ohio State was a dirty team? He said that he, this guy like said he was upset that they tried to start a fight with you guys. They punched our freshman in the face. (laughs) (laughs) We were dirty also, but we were just sneaky dirty. (laughs) Scumbags. I think think the Ohio State thing, it was was the punch after – after we won at Ohio State for the title. But then I think the other part that made it seem like it might be a rivalry was the fact that after the tournament, obviously, there's a trophy to be presented and then there's awards to be given out where most teams, if you win or lose, yeah. we've, we've been on both sides of that. You stick around and, you know, you accept you know, your individual awards if you get one um, and you, you know, applaud the other team, uh, whether you won or lost. But they, they just took their team and went into a corner and, like, did, like, a circle stretch, like, on their own, like, while the awards are being passed out. So, I, that, for me, just felt disrespectful. But outside of that and the fact that we played them three times, I don't think there's a rivalry with Ohio State much. I mean, other I than the fact that we're in the same conference. I think we're just pretty similar teams yeah. in general, the way we play. So, like – I mean, I think they they kind of try to take over kind of the same ideas that we do. So when you put them two together, it's uh, it gets a little heated. I think just based off of our styles. So I mean, I wouldn't if you call it a rivalry, maybe, but you know, it's just a style of play. I think we're both accustomed to, and when you put them together, it's kind of you know, it looks like it's a little heated than it is. But you know, I, I think really, it was it, it was great and, games. And, 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 I, I also think it started kind of the way after that kind of tussle there, the way that Coach Mike talked with Coach Tillman, I think kind of bothered us too. So Yeah, yeah I think like we kind of treated every game the same. We sort of treated every team the same, and they just reacted more. So when someone keeps reacting, you kind of just keep pushing the buttons. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say they were dirty. It was just like Tim said, they're basically the same team as us. They're just a hard – they were – an awesome group of guys, and they're really good, and they're a hard-nosed team. But, you know, those are the most exciting games to play in, just people that you're going to battle with. And so it was cool to play them three times. You know, they got us once, we got them once, and um, obviously the championship game. Must have been the hair dye. Yeah. I think uh, – 100% our way. I think Heacock said it best. Like, if we were preparing for you for a week, we, we hate you. And honestly, as much film yeah, as we want cool. – we probably just learned to, to stop wanting to watch them anymore, so we already hated them more. And it was a trickle-down effect, I would say. So, yeah. Yeah. And not necessarily, like, two teams that are known as rivals as much, but just two big games for you guys that year. You guys played the two teams that defeated you in the 2015 and 2016 National Championship games with North Carolina and Denver, and were able to beat them both. Like, how important – before those games, was it to you guys, like, in your mind to get back at those teams and, and win those games? I don't really think we'd look back and be like, oh, since they beat us last year, I'm trying to get back at them. We were just on a whole different mission, and they were the next team in front of us. That's kind of how I thought we looked at it. It wasn't really like, oh, 
blah, 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 beat us last year. I think it was like, all right, whoever team's next in front of us is going to get stomped. So that's how how I look at it. I was, yeah. I was Especially gonna... Denver, it's the Final Four. I don't think it mattered, you know, yeah. if, if it was – Anyone in front of us in the Final Four just happened to be Denver, and you know we had the same same idea going into that one. No I was what. I was too busy coloring my damn cleats before the UNC. Kelly <laughs> <laughs> oh, was too busy baby. finding his jersey. Yeah, Kelly. Kelly <laughs> Where's Waldo with his damn jersey? <laughs> oh, Schroeder oh. took it twice. I left, I left the door open before breakfast. Someone took it. I thought I took it. Pasta oh. sauce on it. Did you find that jersey? No, it's gone. It's no after it. Somebody made some money. He found it in his back right after the fact. He found it on his basement wall in a frame. I think yes. I might know where it is, but we'll see in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Mike, the biggest rival. Mike 40 jersey, red 40 jersey. I know exactly where it is. And the biggest rivalry for you guys has always been Johns Hopkins, especially you ha- kind of had that elevated once you're in the Big Ten. And when you guys played them in 2017, you guys were ranked fifth and they were eighth, and you had over 14,000 fans in attendance. And you guys managed to blow them out 12 to 5 to, you know, claim the Big Ten regular season title. How would you describe that rivalry with Hopkins and just the history behind it and what it means to play them? Kelly, I think you take this. That was your game. Uh, I mean, I think that was all of our games. That was a field day for everybody. And I think that was just part of that wave coming from Villan- uh, Villanova. They were literally just in our wave. Uh, and we just honestly wrecked them right from the jump. First quarter, destroyed them. I think it was like 8-1, 10-2, 10-3. to By the second, we just shit stomped them right from the Let's jump. And playing in bird. And, and if we talk about shit talk, that, that was the game. We just – we bullied them. They were our son that whole game. It was, it was awesome. I love that. <laughs> I think Matt had That's a good game. Up, Kelly. Pretty – I think yeah. Matt should uh... – no, Matt broke the record that yeah. game, right? In the game in yeah. general, I mean, that was the uh, coolest, I think, game I've ever been far, part of as far as, like, fans. Like, we had whatever 15,000 fans that it was, and they did, like, the flag thing that they do at the basketball games. I mean, it was, like – it obviously helps that we smacked them, but it was like electric. It was unreal. Electric. The eight o'clock game too at night it was sick under the lights. Oh my We God. also had uh, some guys Jordan, from the uh, 1975 team there on the sideline with us, which was dope. Is that the first yeah. time we wore those jerseys too? Yeah, that was no, the first time we wore the throwbacks. Yeah, yeah it was. Well, we, was wore there. we wore them the year before against Ohio year, State. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But in terms of rivalry, that game is the one you circle every year no matter what. I mean, I think we lost our first two times. Uh, the senior class lost our first two games against them. So, you know, like, obviously we lost in the regular season. We beat them in the playoffs our sophomore year. But, I mean, that doesn't matter if you're winning or losing the season. You know, that's the game you circle no matter what. And I think, you know, it's clear with the fans, you know, at those games how much, how much more that game means to everyone else. For those of you guys who are in the PLL, with having a lot of Hopkins guys, how much back and forth is there, is there especially with Paul Rebel? I don't think there's a lot of Hopkins guys, are there? There's like a couple. Yeah, you know, I mean, they did that, like, rivalry game. Yeah, I don't that tell you. Connor's boy. Oh, that's- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's them trying to create a rivalry. There's a lot more yeah, Maryland they- guys than there are Hopkins guys. There's, like, there's like five yeah. Hopkins guys. Maryland we, we have a whole team. But. Uh, Everybody's trying to create a rivalry with Maryland. Everyone wants to be Maryland. That's why they're trying to create it. You know? <laughs> That's, what yeah, it is. Kelly. Beans. That's what it is. Oh, wow. Kelly. Beans. What's up, Gary? <laughs> 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 Gary? Okay, so I think we'll end with a segment. We're going to play a segment of Most Likely to. Um, oh, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put some, put some crazy questions on, too. I'm trying to get deep. Let the people see us. Who's on the oh, trip? Let me get some rhyming questions, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's um, the most nightstand? <laughs> so I think, like, I'll ask one of you because I did – well, I did 12 questions before we moved to having, like, 16 people. <laughs> but um, I guess I'll just ask these to the group then, and then you guys can debate. Uh, who qualifies for each one. 
And I guess, Matt, if you really want to ask some of your own, you can. I feel like you have something in mind you want to ask. <laughs> yeah, let me. I can handle some of these. <laughs> Who could you beat off in a chug off? <laughs> <laughs> Favorite person. All right. Um, Who is most likely to get everyone else hyped up before a game? Nicholas. Manus. 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 Dice. Dice. I think that was pretty – I think you got 100% there. (laughs) Saracen. Did uh, he have any memorable pregame speeches you guys still remember? Speaker. I don't think he had a speech. I think it was just his attitude. Yeah, he's – yeah, yeah, Manus is – I mean, he's so high energy, and he was like that all year just at practice. He's just one of those guys that if you're having a bad day, but he just brings that oomph. So he was just doing that all year. All right, who is the most superstitious? Connor, uh, I think Connor Kelly retapes his stick every game. Kelly. Yeah, probably Beans. Yeah, Beans, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would maybe toss in Chisholm. Yeah, I got a nice, I got a nice video of, of of Nicky Dice feeling himself after the championship win. You can't, you can't, you can't Whoa. underestimate what John's doing. You never know what faceoff guys are doing. Yeah, faceoff That's people perfect. are weird. <laughs> They're weird. They get together and they do stuff. These <laughs> <laughs> do do stuff in like packs, though, not in full tents, right? You Man, gotta I got to like, start twitching down the aisle of the airplane. Are you serious? Uh, he yeah, got, yeah. Anything wasn't right on his sake. Like, Yo, can you take a look at this? I have to like. That's because Rambo would do it. That was that was Rambo trying to make my pocket illegal. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled those strings, huh? Yeah, yeah those strings just popped out of nowhere. Yeah, who is the most likely to like spend the most time working on their stick? Chisholm. Kelly. <laughs> Chisholm. Or uh, someone. Brings- Chisholm had probably forty-five stick. <laughs> <laughs> 44. Remember when Moran broke your stick? <laughs> <laughs> After three weeks, I was four hours stringing it the night before. And then. Uh, no, you were working on that for probably a month. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking up YouTube videos, how to make it perfect. He was like posting his Instagram, like, oh, my baby, my baby. How about the next day? day? Like aerial footage of Heacock pulling the string. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you what, though? The string. Connor. I had the I had the nicest stick on the team by far though. Yeah, yeah, you might have the worst. No, 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 I had the That's nicest the stick. You like my stick for you though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who is the most likely to break an opponent's ankles? Not right. Team out. <laughs> yeah, Jared. Yeah, Jared. Quick. Yeah, Jared. James Bull. <laughs> Probably Jared. The Why don't you ask James Bull who used to break his ankle? <laughs> <laughs> Rambo, I don't even know how you even get to that conclusion. You don't remember? You tell, tell everyone the one time what happened. If anybody here is lucky yeah. to break ankles, Oh, yeah, I remember. When you took him to X, you gave him a little shake. Oh. Matt, do you want to tell people about the time you tried to swim me and the ball fell out and you ran saying. without it? Yeah, Jared, Jared, probably though. <laughs> Coach, Coach <laughs> Repper owned Bull. <laughs> Jared, Jared was your freshman. He was you and Heacock's little pawn that you guys would try to get to mess with me. <laughs> and he did mess with you. He would break your ankles and run you over. He like just had you boy. two delusional boys backing him up. You were a little boy compared to Saracen Bull. You were little. It's crazy. I was sick of breaking his ankle so much, Heacock. It was Yo, so Josh, easy. Josh, you remember that time Heacock was over in the corner cussing to himself because he couldn't figure out how to score <laughs> against our defense? I'm not going to go into that, but I'm just saying right now it's either Jared or Chisholm, and I'll give it to Kelly too because Kelly Noah. has weird whatever he does. Oh, hey, Kelly's, Noah. Weird Kelly's got no shakes. <laughs> Kelly's got more shakes than bowl. Let me get that video. I'm in there. Who got that picture of Bull icing up after Rambo Dice? <laughs> oh my yeah. God! Oh. <laughs> now he's sitting in the chair <laughs> icing in practice. That was right after. And I he's the, he's the same size as Rick still. Yeah. <laughs> no, All right. I was uh, who, is, who is likely to go a bit too hard celebrating a win? Manus. <laughs> no, no, Dice Young. Young. Rambo, yeah. Bryce Young. <laughs> I think I, the I, definition of what's going on. After you scored that one year, Bryce Young. Yeah, Bryce but Young was after a win. Well, not after Bryce. I will kill you. 
Probably off, off the bus. Off the fucking bus. After a goal. Ryan, Ryan on a Ryan Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Tinn Ryan Tinn on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Not after a win. Ryan Ryan on a Wednesday on a Thursday. Yeah, but yeah, Ryan Tinn night on Monday. It didn't have to be a win for Ryan Tinn to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, who is most likely to pull a prank on the other guys on the team? Peacock. Peacock. Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> who who kept no putting water balls in the ball bag's mouth? <laughs> oh, Bryce, wasn't that, that Rainbow? Rainbow? That wasn't oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was you? Yeah. Who uh, oh. was the water best prank someone t- pulled that year? Who what? The little, little, little Rozo uh, paper. <laughs> We hit everybody's when we hit yeah, Cunningham that, paddles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? We hit what? Cunningham. We hit we hit Cunningham's paddle for at the program. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, Heacock switched Brozo's name in a Google Doc. That <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me. Uh, that was Rambo. That was bad. Uh, that was two <laughs> years ago. It wasn't. It wasn't a prank. One of the teachers thought Heacock was an international student. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Chisholm's bike was found in a tree across the street. <laughs> Somehow my bike ended up in a tree. I was messed up. Me and Pond did a group, less, a group uh, presentation. Heacock's in our group. We're trying to do it in front of 150 people, and he's in the back. <laughs> taking off his shirt. We're like, you're, well, you're in our group, dude. About, about sex ed. <laughs> what is lo- what love is? What love is? <laughs> All right, who trash talked the most in practice? Saracen. Oh. Bryce. 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 Not in practice. <laughs> in practice, I give it to Bull. <laughs> I talked a lot of shit. Yeah, no. I give it to Bull. Yeah, I might say Mac Pond. In practice, Pond. Talk trash during games. Shit, yeah, we talk the most trash from the sideline during practice. I make <laughs> Kelly cry when we practice. We'll I, I get scored on here, Chisholm from like 140 <laughs> yards away. Swiss cheese. Uh, don't rub it. That was the best one. <laughs> All right. Um, who was the team DJ? Nice. Manish or Pons? Oh, I think. Pons. Yeah, Pons. Pons, 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 Pons had better mixes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more of the pre-game. post-game mix. <laughs> yeah, that's your right. pre-game was a championship. Definitely bro. not Isaiah with his like 1980s rap that felt was hit, but it wasn't. So <laughs> <laughs> not right. I mean, my bad. That is like some throwback hip hop, buddy. <laughs> you don't listen to music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I really don't. <laughs> And definitely not Ryanson with his corn and screamo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Connor, you were my roommate. I forgot. Hey, what the? I have a, I have a video of, of Kelly dancing to Cher on the bus. Yeah, who was the best dancer? Who was yeah, the best belly. Yeah. Oh, right on. Thomas O'Connell. <laughs> Josh. Don't I think Josh Ryanson was the best dancer. You want to see some of Nice. Damn. Right on cue, baby. That's Ryan, right, so show us a dance move. Ryan, show us your moves, boy. <laughs> I got to go to bed. Did he actually leave? Where? Oh, he's up there. No, he he's there. Two bags of candy, he'll start oh, dancing. Why is Pond just a head floating? Because <laughs> it's dark out, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 o'clock, bro. <laughs> Who is the most likely to beat everyone at video games? Chisholm. Me. Chisholm. Me. Chisholm. <laughs> Oh no, Dan! I get it. Yeah, where the guy you, with the controller like right one video now. game? Rotan is good at a lot of video games. Oh, yeah, Chisholm that low. Depends if Chisholm. It depends if Chisholm's ex girlfriend let him play <laughs> late that night. <laughs> 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 Oh, and he's not even here to defend himself. That's a low blow, Matthew. <laughs> he should have stayed in. <laughs> All unplugged it. What was the game Ball of game choice? NHL. Oh. See, I, I used to beat up on Ryanson in NHL. It was NHL. It's such an underrated game. When me and Heathcock played NHL two-on-two with no offsides and no penalties, we would <laughs> always win. Nobody could beat us. So when it wasn't hockey. was there. That's just not hockey. That's not like a – A win's a win, right? Yes. God, you guys are so immature. 
Peacock, you, how many controllers did you break in college? <laughs> Doesn't matter if I won, I won. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want me to drive to your house right now and show you? <laughs> Idiot. You would want to drive over your boy. All right, next question. <laughs> uh, who is the most likely to outlift everyone? Peacock. 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 Peacock's in hand. Yeah. Uh, strong too. Lawler was strong as hell. It depends. If you're doing forearms, probably Pond. Dan Morris. <laughs> Pond, are them yeah, forearms God. still good? Yeah, oh, got legs, yeah, Mueller. Probably uh, Mueller and Bryce's best friend, Curtis Corley. <laughs> <laughs> athlete Dan Morris. is strong. Who's most right. likely I won president in 2006? I could be. My last question before Matt asks whatever he wants to ask: uh, Who is the most likely to show the most Maryland pride? Like who just wore the state nice. flag too much? Chisholm. Hey, Chisholm. Chisholm. Yeah. Chisholm. Manus. Chisholm's on that. That's got that table <laughs> in the works, right? <laughs> Yo, make sure it's those Maryland socks. Chisholm used to walk around campus with his backpack everywhere, even if he was just <laughs> to class. Didn't have he'd be in class, and I had to go to the bathroom. He put it on his backpack just to go and say Maryland across his number. And he's got the helmet on his on his skateboard helmet. <laughs> <laughs> You want to go to stand for some food real quick? I need to get my back back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> he let it be known that he was on Maryland. He's going to the wrong yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. He's going to catch that kid without his book, his book bag on. <laughs> and I guess we'll wrap things up here. Matt, do you have any – what did I'll you want to ask? I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I won't embarrass these guys. <laughs> what did you right. Matt? Thank what? you guys all so much for joining. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks. Thank you. Go Turks.